What's up internet? My name is Kyle, back with another video about cameras, tech, and all that good stuff. Today, we're gonna talk about the two new Sony cameras that were announced, the 6100 and the 6600, and the two lenses that they announced. And before I start, I just wanna say, I'm going to buy the A6100, and I will tell you why. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm excited to be doing another video. I feel like it's been a little bit, got a haircut, I aged another year, all that good stuff. Anyway, Sony announced all this cool stuff on my birthday a couple days ago, August 28th. Thank you, Sony. If you wanna send a present in the mail, I will somehow get you my address. Okay, so real quick, let me lay the land for anybody who is not familiar with the Sony mirrorless APS-C cameras because the names are a little confusing. Okay, so Sony currently has the A5100. It's the smallest of the bunch. It has a flip up screen, no viewfinder, less customizable buttons, and it's a little more vlogger, beginner entry friendly. Then there's the A6000. It has more customizable buttons. It has an electronic viewfinder. It does not have a flippy up screen for kind of more vlogger friendly, but it's a little bit more of an advanced camera than A5100. Then the next step is the A6300, which has a microphone port. It has S-Log and other log formats where you can shoot video more dynamically, get a little more out of your edit. Also the 6300 introduced 4K, um, and it also has 120 frames per second slow motion. So that camera kind of took the next steps for video specs. Then you have the 6500, which is all of the good stuff of the previous cameras besides the flippy up screen. And it added IBIS, in-body stabilization. So you didn't have to rely on just lens stabilization. And it was the top of the line APS-C camera for Sony for a couple of years. And now Sony has released three APS-C cameras to replace three of those cameras. The 5100, I believe, is just kind of going to drop off. I'm not sure if they're replacing that camera or what. The 6100, which just was announced the other day, is going to essentially replace the 6000. In the same price point, has a lot more, and we'll talk about that later. Then you have the 6400, which replaced the 6300. I believe the 6300 on some websites is discontinued. Not sure if they're gonna do that with the 6,000, 6,500, and 5,100. We'll have to wait and see. And then you may have guessed the 6,600, which was just announced along with the 6,100, is essentially replacing the 6,500. It has in-body stabilization and a couple other things, and it is now the flagship APS-C camera from Sony. Real quick, before we jump into the details about the two new cameras and two new lenses, I have to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform where you can learn anything under the sun, pretty much coding, cooking, photography, whatever it is, it's on that website. What I really like about Skillshare is on the side of the video, they show you what parts are about what, so you can kind of skip around. You don't have to watch the entire thing if you don't want to. You can kind of just drill down and get to what you want to learn. I use Skillshare for learning stuff about Final Cut. It's made me a better editor and maybe it'll make you a better at whatever you want to be get better at. There are over 7 million creators on Skillshare, and if you click on the link in the description and wanna check it out, there's a two month free trial through the link. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about the A6100. And the 6100 is a perfect replacement for the A6000 five years after that camera debuted. So first off, it is the same sensor that is in the Sony A6000 currently, some people out there, some articles say it's different. Some say it's the same. I'll have to do some tests when I get my hands on an A6100. But for all intents and purposes, it's not a jump in megapixel. You're not going up to 30 or anything like that. It's going to be the same. Now, of course, Sony is claiming that this has the fastest autofocus, the new three cameras. I don't doubt them, but sometimes take that number, you know, the 0.02 seconds with a grain of salt. It's kind of a little bit of marking materials, but I'm sure it focuses very fast. In fact, the next stat is actually something that you can kind of grasp your head around is that the old A6000 had 179 autofocusing points, whereas the 6100 has 425 contrast detect, 425 phase detect, 
In other words, the autofocus is going to be much better. And I already love the autofocus in the A6000, so can't wait to use the A6100's autofocus. The A6100 has real-time eye autofocus, which is crazy for an entry-level mirrorless camera. Sony just throws in features that their high-end cameras have, and just this technology is amazing. Super stoked on continuous IAF. Then, as far as video, the 6100 can shoot 4K video, and it's like, I don't even know if my computer can handle it. Actually, scratch that, it can't handle 4K, but I'll give it a shot. It definitely adds flexibility when you're editing. Also, Sony cameras, including the 6100, downsample 6K to 4K. It's not shaky 4K, it's not 4K that's upscaled from 1080 to like other 2K or something like that. It's a great downsampled 6K into 4K, beautiful love that it's in their entry camera. Also a little side note, um, the two latest Canon cameras that came out don't have 24 frames per second video. However, all of the new Sony APS-C cameras have that for the most cinematic look. If you're a filmmaker or anything like that, it's definitely something to consider. Also to expand upon the video aspect is that the 6100, 64, 6600 all have a flip up screen, um, kind of above the camera look. It's not a flip out, but this is just the way Sony is going with their screen options and I'm all for it. Put it on all of them. I know it does block the hot shoe microphone jack spot, but manufacturers are all over it with these kind of simple um, cold shoe mounts that you know you can put the mic on the side or something like that. I would rather have a screen where you can see yourself than not have it. A lot of people complain about that with the A6000. Now that's fixed with the 6100. Also, the 6100 has a microphone jack, which praise the Sony gods because that is something that I've been wanting forever. So many people ask me about their microphone options for the Sony A6000. If you get the 6100, you won't have to worry about not having a microphone jack. It'll make life a lot easier as a YouTuber, as a creator, filmmaker, you name it. Microphone jack, thank you, you're finally here. And last but not least, all three of the new Sony cameras this year, the APS-C line, and as well as the full frame line, have new color science that go into them, um, better skin tones and everything like that. I tested the 6400 a while back. I didn't get to make a video about it, but I tested it, and I love the colors that came out of it, and a lot of people think that Sony colors weren't great before, they are even better now. Okay, so how much is it, and when is it coming out? It's going to be $750 for just the body alone, so no lens, and it is coming out in October. In my opinion, both of those things are perfectly acceptable. October is right around the corner, and $750 is the price that the A6000 was when it came out. However, with the kit lens, it's a little bit more than what the A6000 was. Times change and it's not that much more expensive. And I think it is a perfect kind of entry point for somebody who kind of wants to take photography, you know, to the next step and not use their phone. And this is a perfect camera for the entry level user. And I think that price will come down over time, just like it did with the A6000. So there's three reasons why I really want a 6100 and I will be pre-ordering it. And one has to be the color science. Uh, like I said, I had a 6400 on loan for a little bit. The colors were great. I would love to have that with my next camera and the 6100 has it. And the other thing would be a microphone jack. I really, as a YouTube creator, could use a microphone jack. Using an external microphone isn't that bad. I love the quality and everything like that, but it would take one less step or a couple steps out of the post-production process. So microphone jack, come on home. I can't wait to use a mic. And another thing is the 4K. I've never had a camera that can shoot 4K. My computer, like I said, might not be able to handle it, but I would love to at least have the option to try it out. Um, and I'm super stoked on that. Okay, so then next is the flagship camera for the Sony APS-C lineup. So you got the 6100 as the beginner, and then the advanced is the 6400, and then the flagship is now the 6600. So some people were a little pissed. It's not like a 7000. They didn't change the body. They didn't put in something else, which I'll get to, but here are some of the cool things about the 6600 that none of the other camera models have. So the 6600 has real-time IAF 
in video. So if I'm moving around right now, it'll put a little square on my eye while recording videos. That is super amazing. It's in some of the higher end Sony cameras and now it's gonna be on the 6600. It's gonna be a great feature for filmmakers and everybody out there. Next is IBIS, which the 6500 does have IBIS, but apparently the 6600's IBIS is the IBIS from their full frame cameras, if I've read that correctly out there. Some reviews that I've already seen say it's okay, so, you know, take it for what it's worth, but it has in-body stabilization. Next is a huge thing for the 6600 is it has the Z battery, which is in some of the full frame Sony cameras. So it would kind of make it be a perfect second shooting camera at you know a wedding or something like that. You can use the same batteries between cameras. It also doubles or more than doubles, I think it's 2.2 times the battery life since um, the W batteries that all of the other A6K models have. So that is a welcome addition and with the bigger battery is a little bit bigger grip and I've seen a lot of positive feedback on people and the grip and just enjoying it a lot better. So maybe that is something that might sway me towards the 6600 later down the line. The body is also dust and moisture resistant, but don't go taking it out in like, you know, pouring rain or anything like that. It's not fully weather sealed, but it does have a little toughness to it. And there is also now a headphone jack on the 6600. So that is something else for filmmakers to rejoice. So what's the price for this beast, their flagship APS-C camera? It's $1,400 and it's gonna come out in November of this year and I'm not gonna lie, when I saw that price, I was like, dang, $500 more than the 6400 and almost double the price of the 6100. However, it is their flagship camera and I really like how Sony gives the levels of choice to the consumer. A lot of people are like, oh, it doesn't have this, it doesn't have that. There's three choices and there are three levels that Sony is clearly marketing to. And you know, it's a little bit more money. And like I said earlier in the video, I don't think it's for me just yet. So that's why I'm gonna get a 6100. Be happy with all the upgrades that they're doing to that model. And yeah, 6600 is just a little bit out of my range for what I wanna do right now. Oh, and real quick, uh, the 6400 has no record limit and I've seen through other people's videos that the 6600 does not have a record limit either in video and it also doesn't overheat. It has remained to be seen if that is the case with the 6100. If any of you have seen a review where somebody says the 6100 has no record limit, comment that down below. That alone for YouTubers would make it the best budget YouTube video camera on the market if it didn't overheat and had no record limit. So really stoked to find out about that. So a couple little tiny nitpicks on why I'm not getting the 6600 besides price. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit out of my range, I think, for what I'm doing, but also it doesn't have two card slots. That was like the main thing. They gave it a bigger battery. They gave it a better grip. In-body stabilization. It's a little weather resistant. A lot of cool kind of pro features, but it needs two card slots, in my opinion, to kind of be like a, a wedding camera for me or something like that, because a card can fail and you'll lose all of that work. You'll lose the client's work. And then where are you at? Card failures happen and in professional work where you're getting paid, it's best to have two card slots, but it is it is definitely kind of geared towards professionals, but just keep that in mind. It only has one card slot, you know, stuff happens. So those are the two camera announcements. I feel like they're amazing additions. It's really impressive in my opinion that Sony has announced three APS-C cameras in one year. Name another company that is doing that that is putting features from their full frame lineup in their APS-C cameras. Um, there are some drawbacks to the cameras, of course. They're not all gonna be perfect, but I'm really happy with what Sony announced and I'm going to get my hands on, hopefully both of them, but I'm going to buy the A6100 and talk to you guys about it in a bunch of videos, I'm sure. Okay, and real quick, let's go over the other two announcements that Sony dropped on us the other day. They announced two lenses. One is the 16 to 55 f 2.8 G lens, and then the other is the 70 to 350 millimeter G lens 
4.5 to 6.3 variable aperture. Okay, so let's talk about the 16 to 55 first. There's three things that surprised me about this lens right away. One, it was way more expensive than I thought. I had no idea that it would cost $1,400. Holy crap. On one hand, it's a very fast zoom lens and it's a specific lens for the APS-C lineup. So should have seen that coming. I thought it would be like $750, maybe $800 on the high end. Didn't think it would be almost twice that at $1,400. Holy crap. Also, I realized that there is no OSS in this lens, which blew my mind a little bit. When I saw the price tag, I saw the aperture, saw the G on the lens, I was like, oh damn, no OSS. So a little puzzling to me, maybe there's a technical reason behind them leaving that out. Then the third thing that surprised me about the lens a little bit is that it is a zoom that extends the tube rather than the 18 to 104 G lens. It kind of is all within the tube and it doesn't extend. I prefer that type of lens, but I will have to get my hands on this lens and test it out myself. I am not sure if I'm gonna purchase it. It is absolutely perfect for me. I use the 35 f1.8 all of the time. However, that lens has OSS, but it's really, it's really, OSS is not really that big of a deal to me. However, $1,400 is a big deal to me. It's like, okay, do I like, do I pay rent or do I like, live in a cardboard box and then buy the lens and then try and beg to get back in my apartment? I don't know, I'm, I'm at a quandary here. Oh, but it's $1,400, I don't know. I don't know guys, should I do it? Should I do it for YouTube? Like should I buy the lens because I need to show you guys the lens? Maybe that's the ticket. Are you guys gonna get the lens? Like drop a comment down below if you're like, who cares about money? It's temporary, life is short. YOLO. My God, do people still say YOLO? Okay, and then let's talk about the other lens that Sony dropped on us, which is the 70 to 350 millimeter variable aperture F 4.5 to 6.3 G lens with OSS. Jeez, that's a mouthful. So this is basically an awesome option for wildlife, landscape photographers. I definitely felt that Sony needed a lens like this for a very long time and they're coming out with it and it is a high-end lens. Also, not the fastest lens in the world, but it has OSS and it's got that gold standard on there and it's gonna be a great lens for all types of wildlife stuff. The other options for zoom lenses at this length were the 18 to 105, 18 to 135, and the 55 to 210. However, the 55 to 210 is often considered as like a kit lens. You can get it with the two lens combo and the A6000. So not the highest quality lens. So this is probably gonna be a major step up from that lens. And it's also a major step up in price. This lens is going to come out in November and it's going to be a thousand dollars. So it's gonna be a lot more expensive than the 55 to 210. Think about this though, that lens is a full frame equivalent. I know some of you guys love that of 100 to 525. Slap that on the entry level 6100 and you got a beast of a wildlife setup right there for under $2,000. Okay, and that about sums it up. You know, the 6100, 6600, the 16 to 55, f2.8, G lens, and then the other G lens, the zoom, telephoto. It's just, it's a lot. And it's really awesome that Sony has come out and just been like, yo, we love APS-C cameras. We know there's a market there. We got you. If you guys are interested in pre-ordering everything, if you're just like waiting to click pre-order, I have links down in the description. It really helps the channel out when you guys go through those links. But like I've said before, get gear where it's cheapest for you. I do have links now for B&H, so that's exciting. And yeah, guys, what do you make of all of this? Are you a fan of the three revamped cameras? Are you sticking with your old cameras? Just let's start the conversation down below about all this new stuff. It's good to have options in my opinion. And now we have more options than ever with the Sony APS-C camera and lens lineup. And it's just exciting, it's fun times. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do have a giveaway coming up soon with a bunch of stuff that I've been hoarding. So keep your eyes out for that. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Later.